Dear Father in heaven, in the Old Testament, you tell us the way we know that you're God is you're the only one that knows the future. And you declare the future before it takes place. And that's one of your signatures that you put across your word. You sign it as the God of prophecy. Teach us about prophecy today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Here we go. Prophecy is based on the fact Jesus actually gave us God's map of the future. He starts in the Lord's Prayer by telling us to pray for the kingdom to come. Then he tells us what it's going to look like when the kingdom comes, and that's the growing birth pains that Matthew 24 says. And then Jesus comes back to the second generation church and illustrates that in the book of Revelation. Basically, the second coming of Christ is described, all the white is in the Gospels, all the red is not in the Gospels, and it's almost like a drone view or a satellite view of what earth looks like as Jesus is coming back. When Jesus comes back, deception rules. People are totally deceived. Lawlessness, war, and murder are just the norm. Food scarcity is hitting most people on the planet. Uh, Water scarcity is also there. There will be pandemics, as in a fourth. In one pandemic, a fourth of the earth. Today, that would be two billion people. If that pandemic that's coming hit today, two billion would die. How many total died in COVID? 1.1 million. Two billion. So anything you think about COVID, think of 2,000 times worse. That's one pandemic right here in Revelation 6. So we're talking about, wow. Hatred of God, God's people, both the Jews and the Christians, and persecution is coming. Quakes, seismic, uh, or seismic, you know, seismos is the, the Greek word for this giant shaking of the earth. And, and we keep seeing little quakes here and there. Uh, there was even one, I mean, just about four days ago that hit New Jersey. I mean, it really woke up a lot of people. Global fires, wasn't that last summer? More of Canada burned than has ever burned in one event. But it's not going to just be Canada or, you know, Texas. It's going to be all over the world. In fact, the first global fire knocks out one-third of all trees. One-third. You go, oh, well, without those trees, how do you breathe? The trees, the the great uh, boreal forests, the northern forests of Canada and Siberia and all the Nordic countries, all of that is the giant kind of like pumping station, getting everything, uh, all the CO2 out and all the oxygen in to our air. Wow, global fires and smoke and gloom and volcanoes are all coming. Solar flares and near-Earth objects and disasters, ocean death. By chapter 8, the whole ocean dies. Uh, A third of it dies, and then when we get to chapter 16, uh, verse 3, the other two-thirds die. That's worse, because 78% of the earth is covered with ocean, and that's the plankton. And the great oxygen exchange that goes on in the ocean stops. And then there are just plain old hurricanes and typhoons that are described. But they're so bad that it says people have heart attacks seeing them come. It's, well, actually, it's not heart attack. The, the word right here in Luke 21, 25 is apsuko. That's the Greek word. Op means out of, and suko means your spirit. People expire. It's like their life goes out of them for the fear of what they see coming in the weather. <laughs> wow, that's more scary than some people thought the, the eclipse was. Then there's this demonic alien invasion. We're going to cover that this morning. The real aliens are worse than the ones in the movies because they're real. And what God describes they do is horrible. That's chapter 9. And then the rise of the dragon beast and the false prophet, the unholy trinity. So that's what Jesus said the earth looks like when he returns. And when he returns, it's right here. It's this kaboom of the tribulation as the run-up to second coming. So this 
this whole event is what we're looking at. So basically, the scriptures tell us that Jesus gives us the specific trends for the end of the world. That's what he says in Matthew 24. Now, let me just show you what I'm going to show you in Matthew 24. This is Jesus talking. Uh, when Jesus talks in Matthew 24, Luke 21, and Mark 13, theologians call it the Olivet Discourse. That means he was on the Mount of Olives and he gave a discourse. It was kicked off by the disciples saying, what are going to be the signs of your coming back? So I love the Olivet Discourse because it's exactly what all of us want to know. What are the signs? How do we know Jesus Christ is coming back? Well, in order, look at this, 24, 4, and 5, 6, 7, 7, 9, 9 to 13, and then Luke 21. In order, Jesus introduces first false Christs are coming and war and famine and death and martyrdom and all these signs. Now look at the outline of Revelation 6. Just the first six seals. It's exactly illustrating what Jesus promised was coming. The first seal is the white horse, which is deception, the coming, the rise of the Antichrist. Second horse is the red horse, global war. Third horse, the black horse, global famine. The pale horse, remember I told you the Greek word there is chloros, kind of like chlorine, kind of pale, sickly, gangrenous green. That's the death arriving. Then the fifth seal is martyrdom, all these. Remember, I said there's going to be this global hatred of God, his people, both the Jews and the Christians. And that's what the martyrdom is. And then all these signs, uh, the earthquakes and the horrible weather and everything else. Now look what Jesus says, actually his words. All these are the beginning of sorrows. That's a Odin is the word there. It means birth pains. Verse 33, so you also, when you see all, all, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation, the generation that sees all of it happening, because when it all happens, it happens fast. Remember, we covered that in chapter 1 of Revelation. Tacos, remember? Tachometer. Can you remember all the way back to last week, you know? Because uh, you're having five hours a day of this information exchange that's going on. But back then, we talked about the rapid, so Jesus puts it this way. The generation that sees all this stuff happening at once is going to actually be the generation that experiences it. And that's what everybody's always wondered. Are we that generation? Well, let's think about that. Because the generation will not pass away till all of these things, that whole list I showed you, those 12 trends that are present when Christ returns. So basically, the end of the world trends... Jesus says, what we just read, we'll have this Odin, this birth pain characteristic. The, the idea that the earth is going to be uh, seeing greater and greater visibility, greater and greater frequency, greater and greater intensity. See, birth pangs, labor pains, they get stronger and closer together and stronger and closer together. And it's so that you can see them. You can see the person. They're, they're like being squashed the, the expectant mother delivering this child. Their muscles are squashing them. They, they are visible, frequent, intense, and have a great impact. The whole earth is going to be going through these birth pains. What, what are they? Well, global deceptions are going to get more believable. You haven't seen anything yet. The Antichrist and the false prophet this dynamic duo that's going to run the world. The Antichrist is going to say, I want you to do this, and this is how you know I'm the one you're looking for. Go ahead. And the false prophet, it says in chapter 13, we're coming to, can call down fire from heaven. Do you remember Elijah and the, the prophets of Baal, and he prayed, and God sent fire, and it consumed the altar, the sacrifice, and even licked up the water, and everyone fell on their face and said, God is God. Satan. That's why God said signs and wonders you need to be aware of. Because Satan is the God of this world, and he can do, Job 1 and 2 says, weather things. Satan called a storm out of the wilderness that destroyed Job's children having a big reunion in one of their homes, and it flattened it and killed them all. And that was Satan. 
the lightning that came and killed Job's servants and their flocks, Satan sent. So you got to understand, Satan is the God of this world under the authority of the God of the universe who allows him parameters for God's purposes. And that deception is just going to get un unbelievable. Diseases are going to get more lethal, global warming. You ain't seen nothing yet. It says the sun, the sun will scorch. Have you ever put your English muffin in the toaster oven and left it a bit too long and watched it scorch? People are going to be scorched by the sun. You haven't seen warming to the extent it's coming. It's going to get deadly. Global water shortages, it says that people are going to die because the water is all poisoned. It's starting. But it's not there yet. Global food scarcity is going to get more regular. Global conflicts are going to get bigger and deadlier. Global hatred of Christ and all associated with him is going to get more personal. It's not very personal for us. I mean, you share the gospel and someone will mock you a little bit. They, they aren't stoning yet in America. They, they aren't dragging Christians off in crowds and imprisoning them or beating them to smithereens. See, we, we really are insulated, but it's coming, global hatred. Now, this is all before Christ comes. These trends mean they're, they're starting to get stronger and wider and deeper and more impactful. See, all of this, I 110% believe in the rapture of the church. But before the rapture, this is going to all be going on. You understand, the rapture is the launch of the church. The control rods come out of earth. The Holy Spirit's restraining influence is removed, mostly. And it just breaks loose. But before that there's going to be even more complete global tracking than you've ever thought possible. So let's just go through 10 of the trends. Okay, number one, here's a trend, the explosion of global travel. Uh, Daniel, that great prophet, Jesus' favorite prophetic Old Testament prophet. The only prophet in the Old Testament, when Jesus is talking about the future, he names him. He says, don't you remember what Daniel said? Well, what's what was Daniel saying? What you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro. So basically, a, a picture that the angel says that the end is going to be is that many will run to and fro. There's going to be some change. Let's just do quick history. I'm a history major. Uh, 3,000 years ago, Jonah got into a wooden boat driven by wind power and, you know, tried to get away from God. 2,000 years ago, the apostle Paul got into a wooden boat, basically same design, driven by wind power and a little paddling to serve God. Columbus got into a very similar wooden, wind-powered boat to discover uh, you know, the Western Hemisphere. And 250 years ago, Ben Franklin got on a very similar wooden boat driven by wind power to get the French to support America in the American Revolution. But 200 years ago, the steam engine was figured out. And they didn't have wooden boats driven by sails. Everything changed. Then a hundred years ago, very quickly, we went from steam engines and metal boats to cars and planes and rockets. And now in 2023, four billion people flew across the surface of the earth. Now, how would you describe that 2,500 years ago? Many will run to and fro. Remember, these prophets are seeing things that they have never seen before and don't understand. In fact, Peter tells us that the Old Testament prophets searched what or what manner of times the Spirit of Christ which was in them was signifying. They didn't even know what they were seeing. They just were writing it down. Okay, Daniel doesn't stop there. He says, not only are people going to be traveling hither and yon, but knowledge is going to increase. <laughs> That's an understatement, you know. We've gone with Google and nanometer architecture to zettabytes. I mean, I like my phone. As Apple describes it, has a camera powered by a chip with 11.8 billion transistors in a... This is just their ad for this phone. By the way, this is the 14. This is not... I think we're on 15 and maybe 16 is being launched. I don't know when. This is an old phone in Appleology, but it has a 16-core neural engine that's capable of 11 trillion 
operations per second, they like to call it teraflops. How do you like that? Uh, for perspective, 15 years ago, teraflop computing was only done by a building-sized government-funded computer in either Japan, US, or the EU. And that teraflop, 11, or, uh, yeah, 11 teraflops, is going on just when I take pictures of you guys. It's making all kinds of calculations, more than, than any military had the capability of doing more than 15 years ago. Not, and that's not all. I already told you. On this phone, I have my entire library. Uh, when Bonnie and I, in 2017, were sent out from our local church to become missionaries, one of the men in the church says, Pastor, you have 228 linear feet of books in your office. What are you going to do with those 7,000 books? I said, I don't know. Donate them or something. He says, no, you need to take them with you. And I went, huh. And he bought the Logos version of all 7,000 of them. And they're in my phone. Isn't that amazing? Knowledge increases. Oh, but that's not all. Uh, with this knowledge has come, did you read the Washington Post? AI hustlers stole women's faces and put them in ads, and the law can't help them. With just a few seconds of footage, scammers can now combine the video, this is the article, and audio using tools from companies like Hey Jen and Eleven Labs to generate a synthetic version of a real person's voice swap out the sound on an existing video, and animate the speaker's lips, making the doctor results more believable. Look it. Because knowledge is increasing, we're coming to the point where you can, you know what they're already starting to do? They're starting to take people from the past that we have their voice, that are famous, even movies, any movie of anybody, you can do this synthetic overdub and and animation of their lips, and have them say anything you want them to say. Wow. What, what, do, what should we do about that? Well, Jesus said, false Christ and false prophets will rise with great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. So, so Christians are going to be deceivable if they're not resisting. Now look at this. Only scripture can be trusted, Acts 17, 11. These were more fair-minded than those in thought. You all know this verse, the Bereans. In that they received the word of God with all readiness and searched the scriptures to find whether what was said was true. Who's that talking about? Paul. When Paul taught, the Bereans checked what he said against the scriptures. Do you know why you all are here right now at Word of Life? to become scripture checkers. Because you're going into the absolute abyss of deception. You're living in a time when you really actually shouldn't believe anything you see or hear. You should pause and do what Paul told the Thessalonians, test all things. We must stay alert, test everything, and hold fast to what's good. How do you know what's good? It's the living and abiding word of God. It's the only source of truth that matters for your soul, for your life, for eternity. So that's knowledge. We're only on the second thing. Weather is going to go wild. Have you seen any wild weather? I mean, it's just we're at the front end of this. There will be signs in the sun and in the moon. I mean, you all, we just had an eclipse yesterday. And blood moons, you know, and there's all this... People get all excited. And the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity because the sea and the waves roaring, and men's hearts, apsuko, there's that Greek word, failing. The spirit pops out of people. It's like a balloon popping is really what apsuko means. Pop balloon. Why? Because of fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heaven will be shaken. People are going to be looking at their, you know, Facebook Live or their, you know, uh, whatever, I don't even know, TikTok videos. And they're going to see that wall of water coming and wiping out a city. And they're just going to go and just die. Because they can't, their body cannot take the fear of what they see with the weather going wild. Well, here's February's weather. This is from the NOAA. February 2024, the average global surface temperature ranked the highest since global records began in 1850. 
So the NOAA tracks everything, all the satellites, all the ground-based stations, and everybody in Europe, all of our allies, everything, they, they, all the weather of the world that they can get the data on. And Australia had the third warmest summer, and Oceania had the fourth warmest, Jama Japan had the second warmest, Asia was only the 26th warmest, Europe had the very warmest ever in, since 1850, so in 174 years, uh, Europe hit it. The Arctic was third warmest. North America had the warmest in 174 years that they've been keeping records. Now, I know. It was probably warmer in 1849. It doesn't matter. We're looking at the trend that the world is looking at. See, that's why this is important, because you and I know that Revelation 6 through 19 says all the air of the earth is going to be polluted, all of the water is going to be po poisoned, and the animals and plants are going to die. Lost humanity believes in evolution, denies biblical creationism, so the creator is going to show his power and is going to hit Mother Earth that they're all trying to protect, and they can't protect themselves against God. Uh, just look at the trajectory. If you just take, see, all the droughts, freezes, tropical, wildfires, winter storms, severe storms, flooding, and you just chart them, just the 40 years from from. 80 to 2020, look at this trajectory. And, and it's just exponentially, according to Jesus, going to go up. I like this. This is one storm. When we were, we were actually driving through this thing, headed to the Word of Life board meeting, uh, you know, there's the Great Lakes, here's Michigan, you know, there's uh, Wisconsin, and below it, Iowa and Indiana right there. That's one storm that knocked down millions of acres of corn and soybeans. Bonnie and I were driving, and I said, honey, look at that. We were in Nebraska. Every acre of the corn was flat down, just like it had a, a steamroller come over it. And that was just one billion dollar event of that year that had 20 billion dollar events. All that is is thunderstorms. That's what all the blinking stuff is. One storm that covered 700 miles. God says, that's what's going to be going on all over the earth. Okay, what's the fourth trend? Well, the Bible says in those days, the people, tongue, and tribes, and nations will see the two witnesses, the dead bodies, for three and a half days. Wow. And will not allow the dead bodies to be put in the graves. And those who dwell on the earth, that's speaking of humanity. That's speaking of everybody. Because all the living people that haven't died yet and either gone to heaven or into the holding tank for the judgment, all of them that are alive are on the earth. So this is saying everybody is watching an event for three and a half days, and the whole world is not only making merry, but they're sending gifts to one another. This is Prime. This is FedEx. Can you believe that there's coming? See, that's why the prophets didn't understand this. Because when one of the emperors died in the Roman Empire, the furthest reaches of the Roman Empire, some of them didn't know he died for six months. Because news traveled at the speed of horse and boat. And the boat would go, and then the horse would go, and if the horse didn't trip and the guy fall off and die, another horse would go, and they'd try and take the news to the furthest parts of the empire. It's even worse getting it to Asia. You had to go through, you know, the Silk Road or sail your life away trying to get there. But in Revelation 11, when the, when the beast and the false prophet and Satan himself kill the two witnesses, the whole world, the whole world watches. Now let me show you, yesterday at 4.30, all the green are the Facebook Live broadcasters. All the blue are the people online. This is just Facebook. This is not Instagram. This is not TikTok. This is not Twitter. This is just Facebook. Can you imagine if I overlaid all of the social medias? Those are all the people at 430 that were active yesterday. Do you see? This was not possible until, what year did the iPhone come? 07 or 09? I don't remember. But before the iPhone, the computer chip, before that, uh, or I mean between that and the iPhone, the satellites. This was never possible. How do you like this? Uh, the arch enemy or arch 
friend of everybody. There's Elon, you know, the 50-year-old genius that he is. This, these are the Starlink satellites today. And terrifying video reveals Elon Musk's huge army of satellites as scientists warn of Starlink's hidden or dangers. For the whole world to see an event, you need that. When did that start? That didn't start till very recently. In fact, Elon just posted a, a Twitter picture of every launch from 2010 through 2024 from his starbase in Texas. And it's a, it's a video from a drone that they hold on the Starlink base and they over superimpose over it every launch and every landing and even all the explosions of all of his test vehicles out there. That's just the last 10 years, 15 years. Unbelievable. Well, number five of the trends, the scriptures tell us there's going to be an explosion of global pandemics, for nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and pestilences. That's, that's pandemics, that's global sickness. When I was teaching, I'm headed right after this to Florida, do the same course down in the Florida BI. When I was there last year, I put this headline up for him because on March 2nd, 2023, a man in Tampa, Florida, went to his sink, got water, went, I mean, who would snort water up their nose? He did, and he got Nigleria fowleri. It's called the brain-eating amoeba. Its lethality, that's how, how deadly it is, is 97%. Wow. Now, this is much more recent. This is Easter weekend. This is April 3rd. Bird flu researchers sound the alarm. New pandemic could be 100 times worse than COVID. Uh, it's true. It's the avian influenza. And right now, the latest bird flu is going into our dairy cows and into our chickens. In fact, I told Bonnie, I read her the headline, two days ago, that largest egg company in Texas killed two million laying hens. I mean, they killed them that day, and it's gross what they do. You know, they kill them, they take them outside, and they burn them because they're trying to stop the avian virus. But what happened is, why it made the news is, it transferred following an American patient experiencing the first case of bird flu, the first case in the world, in history, of, being, of the bird flu being transmitted from a mammal to a human. The White House said they're monitoring the situation. Great, I know what's gonna happen already. It's just gonna get bigger, more lethal, wider, more virulent, the pathogens. Here's a history of all pandemics going from the Antonin, uh, the Roman emperor, all the way through the plague of Justinian, the Japanese smallpox, all of them, and the bigger the little uh, pathogen there, the more people died. And here it goes, it goes all the way down, uh, you know, to the Spanish flu, you've all heard of that, HIV, you've all heard of AIDS and HIV, 25 to 35 million have died of that, swine flu, SARS, Ebola, look. I added this just for you to see. This is the total death toll from 2020 to 2024. 1.1 million have died of COVID. And so cholera, Hong Kong flu of 68, Russian flu of 1889, Asian flu of 57, right there. COVID was a, a member of the Global Plague Club. Now look at this. There is Black Death, bubonic plague. 200 times more people died of that than of COVID. And here's smallpox, Spanish flu, Justinian's plague. Guess what? The tribulation death toll just in chapter 6 is going to be 4,000 times COVID's deaths. 20 times black death. Unbelievable numbers. Okay, how about the global explosion of digital money and global tracking? Now, you all know what it says in Revelation 13. He, the Antichrist, causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or their forehead. And, and you know what? What everybody gets all worked up on? Is it a barcode? Is it an implanted chip? What is it? 
The purpose of prophecy is not for us to, to figure out the mechanics of it. The prophets that wrote it down couldn't even figure out what was happening. What we should step back is, look at what it's saying here. No one can buy or sell except the one who has the mark of the name of the beast or the number. Now that should ring a bell. Digital numeric money? What is that? When this was written, money was grain or oil or gold or salt or slaves or fabric. It was commodity driven. Money is not commodity driven anymore. In fact, what is uh, Warren Buffett, uh, one of the greatest investors in American history, you know, Buffett, the, the sage of Omaha, he's called. He says commodities are barbaric relics. New money is digital. There, there is no paper money to match the amount of volume of wealth, the hundred trillion dollars of wealth in our world. But you know what it says here? You can't buy or sell without a number. Bonnie and I uh, were, were speaking recently in Chiang Mai, Thailand. And I was uh, going to the airport. I'd just spoken to all those doctors. I had the rental car. I was putting gas. You know, I was fiddling with and putting my card in. And as I was trying to put the gas in, my phone went ping, ping. And I looked down, and it said, someone is using your credit card in Southeast Asia. If this is you, type Y, you know, text Y. If it's not you, text N, and we'll stop your card's use. And I looked up, and there on top of that, I mean, we were so far, jungly, whatever, was a little satellite dish. And I had poked my credit card in the gas pump, and it went up to one of those satellites and went to that, the headquarters for all charging uh, clearinghouse, which happens to be in Omaha, Nebraska also, and it checked my account, and it, it wasn't sure it was me, but it did know where my phone was, so in a millisecond, it sent a text to me asking me if I was using my card in Chiang Mai or not. And I'm not a high target. When Satan is running the world, you will not be able to buy gas or food or even unlock your electronic door without subscribing to him. That's total global digital tracking. I like this. This is um, a new satellite coming. New satellite capable of spying on your every move is set to launch in 2025. The satellite created by startup company Albedo is so high quality it can zoom in on people or license plates from space. Of course, raising privacy concerns among experts who say it's going to make a big brother state watching us. Albedo claims the satellite won't have facial recognition software, and it doesn't mention whether it will refrain from imaging people or protecting their privacy. Aren't you comforted by them, what they aren't saying they're going to do? This is one private satellite. This is not even a military satellite. This is a commercial satellite for people to keep track of things they want to keep track of. Wow. No one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. God promised that 2,000 years ago. You. Did you catch? You're living with all of these things happening. No other generation has been alive on earth that had the, these first you know, six that I've shown you. Now let's go to another one. Jesus said 2,000 years ago, there will be great tribulation such as not been since the beginning of the world, nor will ever be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. People read that and they go, what? This is what we call weapons of mass destruction. Now think about the Bible world. How could you kill someone in warfare? Oh, if they were close enough, you'd shoot an arrow at them. If they were about the same distance, maybe you could be good enough to throw a spear at them. Uh, you could catapult a rock or some flammable stuff at them. Um, you could get them with a sword, but now you've got to be, you know, an arm's length away from them. Those were the only projectiles long distance in the Bible times. Now, with a sword, you've got to catch them and stick them with the sword. So guess what? They never annihilated everybody. 
because people were always escaping. I mean, even in the destruction of Jerusalem, they crawled through the sewers. You know, they, they figured a way out. They, people hide under stuff. You know what I mean? You could never kill everybody, never in the Bible times, ever. You couldn't annihilate. Uh, it, it's amazing because you just got them one at a time. That was until 1939 when they finally unleashed the power of the atom. In 1945, they finally used it, and all of a sudden, one little boy, he was called Little Boy and Big Boy, the bombs, knocked out 100,000, evaporated and incinerated 100,000 living, immortal souls in a millisecond. Oh, what it is is, There's going to be an explosion of weapons of global wars, human death, and global destruction. And Jesus said, at the end, it's going to be that if I don't stop this, nobody will survive. And he doesn't exaggerate. Well, what's interesting is right now we see the Chinese, the Iranians, and the Russian, who we already know are the key players in the end of the world. And they are all over the place being involved directly in confrontation with the Western world. Now, the Antichrist is coming, and we'll see him when we get to chapter 13, is the leader of what what Bible scholars call the revived Roman Empire. And he's going to be the great Western power, and then there are going to be the kings of the East, and then there are the kings of the North, and then there are the kings of the South. You're starting to hear this in the news. It's called the Great South, you know, the, 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 the great southern part of the world that's been overlooked, which basically is Africa, coming up and becoming hugely powerful in the end. And then the kings of the east, you already know, North Korea and China and everything going on over there in the north, all the Russian allied with the Iranians. But, I mean, we think America is so great, and it is. But just one thing the Russians are good at Many things they're good at. One thing they're really good at is missiles. They still have the world's best anti-aircraft missiles. And they have the world's largest thermonuclear missiles. And I showed you this on day one, but I'll show it to you again. Their Sarmat missile, they call it the Great Satan, uh, travels nine times faster than a bullet. It travels at four and a half miles per second. One of them has 16 individual bombs that destroy 15 times more than Hiroshima. And so basically one missile can wipe out the entire area, the inhabited area of Britain. It would take two to get all of France. Russia has dozens of these largest missiles in the world, which immediately makes everyone ask this, where is American biblical end times prophecy? Well, after reading the Bible, searching, looking at every word. I'm never convinced that I see America anywhere. I mean, I see the European Union, I see the revived Roman Empire, and I'll talk to you about that. America is just part of that old Roman Empire. But what happens to America as we know it today? Well, we probably align with the Antichrist revived Roman Empire of the West, which is Western Europe and all of that. Or, probably more likely, we implode financially. Our $34 trillion debt is unmanageable. And it's going up. It's going up rapidly, fast. You see the debt clock. It's, it's, you know. And probably what's going to happen is America's going to break into smaller parts and America will stop being powerful because it'll kind of be you know, the whole Texas thing. They're already a separate everything, power grid, and they, they are ready to be alone. And there are other groupings of states that are wanting to, to be away from this federal problem. Or we explode when Russia stops threatening and actually launches some of those Sarmat missiles, or we fade out. Do you know what's more likely? An EMP blackout strike. China could do it any moment they wanted to. North Korea and Russia or Iran could do it. All you need is one container ship, and there are gazillions of them everywhere. They're they're parked everywhere around our country, and all you need is one container ship that has an EMP, which is a Scud missile, that will go up to 50, 100, 125 miles up and just explode up there an electromagnetic pulse fries all the phone communication, all the computer, all the internet, all the electricity that runs the gas pumps. You know, the power went out last week. I don't know if it went out in your dorms. It blinked here all the time. Can you imagine if the power goes out in America? 
we would definitely fade out. They've said that, that maybe a third of Americans would die because they couldn't have water. I mean, we rely on electricity for everything, for water, for gas, for everything, heat, everything. We need electricity. I mean, people would die without their phones and their internet. Or we just dry out. Do you remember last year? We aren't even talking about it now because we had so many big winter storms, but there was this mega drought, and, and all the, the reservoirs were just going down to nothing in the West. Okay, number six. There's also going to be this, Paul talks about this, peace and safety movement. Uh, this idea of what I call global peace, prosperity, and materialism, and people are marching for that. They want to stop all wars, and they want to stop polluting, and they want to have everybody be friendly and everything. And what we see at the end is this. this if we had 100 people on the stage right now, if we took 100 of you out here, and, and we lined up global wealth, it would be like this. One person would be standing over here, and they would have almost half of everything. The other 99 would be there. Then the next 18, 19 people would have uh, almost the other half. And then the 80%, actually, the, the poorest 80 people would share only a nickel of every dollar. That's the wealth disparity in the world right now. The richest 1% of the world have half of everything. Then the next 19%, which is basically, you know, America, Western Europe, and the rich people of the Middle East and Asia, they have the other half. And then the 80% of the world, which is 6 billion people, they have 5%. And the people that are the poorest live on about a dollar a day. Now, all of you just kind of feel in your pocket. If you, have, if you have an Apple phone in your pocket, you have about two, one to two years full-time work of those 80, eight, or, yeah, 80 percent of the people in the world. If you have, you know, an Apple watch, you have a year's pay. We are absolutely rich. You're, you're paying an unbelievable sum to them to go to the school. And so, basically, God says there's going to be a great wealth divide at the end, and boy, do we see that. Number nine, there's going to be a global hatred for Israel. It says all the nations of the earth are going to gather against Israel. Did you see this in January? This is Washington, D.C. This is the largest gathering ever of a protest to involve Israel. 400,000 people gathered in Washington, D.C., to protest Israel. Wow. They will deliver you up to tribulation, Jesus said to the Jews. They will kill you. You'll be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Zechariah says, Jerusalem will be a very heavy stone for all peoples who will try and throw it away. And they're going to be gathered against it. And finally, the good news is, there's the global explosion of evangelism. You know what Jesus said? What's going to mark the end? The gospel of the kingdom is going to be preached in all the world. When he said those words, he knew where all the world was. They didn't. There are parts of the world that weren't even discovered until we had airplanes flying. They're still finding stuff. I mean, LIDAR is finding stuff all the time. Satellites are mapping stuff we didn't know was there. There are primitive Stone Age tribes that weren't found until the 50s. There are parts of the earth that, that we didn't know about. Jesus said, all the world is going to get the gospel to all the nations. Then the end is going to come. And the gospel first has to be preached to all the nations. Well, when we started figuring it out, I mean, this is the, the IMB, you know, the International Mission Board of the Southern Baptists. They publish every year this map that has the unreached people groups and, you know, the, the whole, all the stages of that, those that, that no one speaks that's a Christian speaks their language, or there's no scripture, or there is no one that we know of that, that speaks or has heard of Christ, and so they have them all classified. And the red ones are the really serious ones. And look at them. They're clustered around the subcontinent of India, uh, parts of Southeast Asia, of course, uh, you know, the, the Sub-Sahara, Africa, the Middle East. There are little ones here. They're even all over America. There are Native uh, American, kind of indigenous, they, they call them the reserves. We used to call them reservations, but they call them reserves. And they, they are Native American groups that are very unevangelized. Uh, un they're all, I mean, we know about all these, you know, like uh, 
Amazonian tribes and all that. But guess what? We know where they all are. We know which ones through Wycliffe. We know which ones have the Bible and which ones don't. We know what languages we're missing. And right now, through those teraflop phones, there are translators now that are going and recording these people and are, through artificial intelligence, capturing their language and translating the scriptures faster than it's ever been done in history. It's interesting. But when we get together after the break, the greatest evangelistic event ever is coming in Revelation 7. Because what happens, we're supposed to do reaching our generation for Christ. But during the darkest time, God does something amazing. We're going to see that. So what's coming for the final days of earth? Some really neat stuff that should motivate us to tell others about Christ till he takes us from here. And I got done before the bell. Have a great break. In the-